For myself personally, I like to take my time when I am editing. I find it a great part of the process and it just kind of finalises it. But not everybody feels that way. So one thing that Luminar AI can do is it can speed up this process for you. Not everybody wants to learn layers. Not everybody wants to learn luminosity masking. It's a good part of the process though and it is a part of the photographic process and a good understanding of it will improve ultimately the photography itself. But not everybody wants to do that. Some people just want to come in, have their photograph in focus, uh, nice light and then just bang, edit it and then share it wherever they want. So what I'm going to do with this video here is I'm going to make it really, really quick and I'm just going to show you how the templates work in this case for this sunset the templates themselves they read the image for you and as you can see just now it's already said sunset soft sunlight glow so it's read this image and it understands that it is a sunset image so i'm just going to show you how very quickly that this can take on board your image and change the image quite considerably or in my case I'll be subtle with it but I'll let you see how we can do it so let's dive right in okay I'm using it as a single image edit as you can see down here we have Lumix T1 uh, one of one the reason it is a Lumix image instead of my usual Nikon or Fuji is Lumix have been really good and sent me through the new S5 and a couple of lenses to try. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm trying that and then I'll do a review in the camera as well. But it won't be a technical review if MD's into the technical side of things, just a hands-on review of the camera. So hopefully you'll tune in for that one. But right, let's get back on with this. So Luminar AI. And I'd like to point out yet again that this is the beta version, so not everything is locked down. Uh, so there is certain elements, a few people have been asking in the comments, there are certain elements that aren't finalised yet. As a whole, the folks that have got access to Luminar AI, the beta version, are only showing you what the software can do. We're not diving deep into it just now. So for anything that you see here, if you have any questions, if I can't answer them, I do apologise about that. But as I say, it's just a beta copy at the moment. So I'm just going to show you as quick as I can without blethering on how this can change this image here. Initially, it's read the image, the AI technology has read the image and it said that, okay, this is a sunset. So it's offering me a few options here and it's offering me sunsets, soft sunlight glow, storm chasers, I can only presume because of the sky and the foreground elements being land, and big city lights. And I can, again, only presume that that's because of the vibrancy in the image. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump straight into easy landscapes because I prefer that sounds as if it's a simply stunning landscapes. It sounds as if it's a subtle edit. So I'm going to jump straight into that one. And I can go through these black and white, which I'm not going to do for this image, although it works OK. Sunset. For me, too vibrant. I can go in and edit that and pull it back. Forest stream. That's got a nice warm glow to it. So I might go back to that one. Clean light. Too blue, too cold a light for me, long exposure. Too bright, but that could work once you get into the edit side of it and adjust things. And snowfall. Too contrasty for me. So the one that I really liked there was forest stream. So I'm going to accept forest stream and then I'm going to get in and tweak it. So if I get into edit now, I can see what has been used in that template. So I am going to get in and tweak this ever so slightly. So if I'm going to get into colour, and I'm going into HSL, and again, the hue of the greens, I am going to pull the hue of the greens back a bit, just very, very slightly, and then I'm going to boost the yellows, being aware that I don't paint too much into the sky with this, uh, I'm then going to go into the saturation, and again, I'm going to pull the saturation of the greens back to a saturation that I'm happy with, and then I'm going to push that slightly. And I seem to have a nicer balance visually for me. Right, so there we have the before and the after. So you can see that straight away, the difference that that has made. I am then going to go into the landscape. And I was about to say, I expected golden hour to be turned on for this one. So let's have a look at the golden hour if we push it further. 
And you notice I'm doing this very subtly. Yes, that brought that in. The one that I am going to take back because it's not one that I'm really keen on using is the foliage enhancer and watch what that does to the greens. Nice and subtly, it pulls them back. That's just one of the sliders. You find the sliders that you like to use, whether that's in Luminar 4.3, 4.1 Luminar, or in the new Luminar AI software, you'll find the ones that you're going to use. I'm also going to get in and add details to this. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the details a tiny bit further than they are. That I'm happier with. But what I'm going to do is take the details out of the sky. So I can jump in here and I'm going to use the paint instead of a raise and I'm going to take the brush up quite big and I'm just going to paint in the details that I feel I want enhanced slightly. So basically it's most of the foreground <laughs> elements in there. It was quite windy when I shot this so you'll notice that some of it is out of focus and the image has been stacked together as well just to let you know. The lighthouse itself is quite dark here so that's what we'll deal with next. I'm going to jump into the local masking and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click basic and I'm going to lighten the entire image here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the highlights and you'll see that lifting it and then I'm going to push the exposure. Again, that might be too much, but what I'm watching is the lighthouse. I'll deal with the balance later once we've done that. Uh, warm it up slightly. No, because that's going to cool it down slightly. No, so we could push the exposure slightly more. Right, I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in those elements that I just added. So I'm going to take back the opacity. And I do realise I'm talking quite quick because I want to make this quite a quick video for you. So if I go in there and paint carefully, it won't be perfect. And I know that because I like to take my time when I'm doing this. But it's just to show you how we can change things right so i've painted that in there and the lighthouse as you know is in front of the sunset so it's going to be darker here but you like to balance that out so again i am going to paint a wee bit further and i'm going to turn up my opacity this time because we don't want it too patchy so i'm not going down to the lighter areas i'm spending my time painting up here there is patchiness down here let's just try once across there that patchiness is back there. Let's paint it again. So basically what you're doing is you're trying to balance this out. Right, we can see in at the edges here and the patch down here. Let's go for it. And the patch down there. We can see with that that it is quite patchy. So what we would have to do is balance this. And I'm going to paint over all of it just to balance it. Right, way too much. A halo around the lighthouse doesn't look right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back the exposure just a tiny bit and then I'm going to zoom in and I used the, in my case it's a PC, Control and Plus and what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase these halos. So if I now go into the erase and if I take the opacity to about 86 and I just check there just to check to see what the difference is going to be. You'll notice the feather is still sitting at the side. Right. What we can and can't do here is I can't hold down shift and draw a line. It doesn't work. So we have to do this by hand and by eye. And I actually, I picked this image intentionally because I knew that I had to balance this lighthouse out. So the templates are fast. They are really fast and they are not what you would call quick fixes, they're quick results. So when we brought the image in, it was quite flat image, not too much saturation in it. More natural looking and that, that's how the image was captured. But if you want to add that extra punch to it, you can do that. The lighthouse, I am aware, is not done brilliantly. I would spend more time with that, but I just want to show you how quickly it can be done. Last but not least for this, I want to highlight certain areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new local masking brush. And I'm going to get into basics. And I am going to lift the exposure slightly. Not much at all here. And what I'm doing is I'm watching these areas of light. And I'm also going to lift the warmth in these areas. That may be enough. Because if we go too far, that happens. But that there might be enough. 
what I'm also going to do is lift the highlights in those areas as well. So we now have that image there. What I can then do, as you've guessed, is I can paint these in. I'm going to take the opacity just to about 57 though. And what I'm doing is just highlighting the areas that I want to draw your attention to where the light has been. So just across there, across there. Let's take it down there. It won't have too much of an effect there, but it will have an effect. Let's just draw that up there. So basically you're moulding the light within the software. Similar to dodging and burning, really. Basically that is what we're doing here. I'm not going to take it down there because the lighthouse still needs to be balanced slightly. So let's just take the opacity down and just for the sake of it, let's lighten some of these. Right, I'll close that local masking down. So here we have the before and the after. Before and after. So that was relatively quick and I hope you got three, two, one. So let's have a look at the before and after. I'll go back, three, two, one, back into the essentials panel. Let's have a look at the before and after. And I am aware of this, so. Three, two, one. So let's have a look at the before and after. Go in here. And I've probably pulled the lighthouse too much forward. So I can go back and edit that. I can go back in to here and go into basics. It was the first one I added. So I can pull the exposure back. There we go. Let's just go for that. Close that back in here. And let's look at the before and after, before and after. For me, I prefer a darker foreground just to highlight and send the, the viewer through the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new local mask, this time basic. I'm going to jump straight in to exposure, pull that back, and I'm looking just for a subtle change. And let's boost the contrast slightly. So that is very, very subtle. And you'll see what I mean once I do this. Then I am going to paint this in and the opacity, I'm going to leave at that. So let's go in here and just paint this in. And let's just paint through there. So there you go, that's subtle enough just to allow me to tweak it slightly to about there. So what I'll do is I'll go back into the Essentials tab and then go to the Before and After. There you go. So you can see the difference that that has made to the image. Yes, I would go in and tidy up that, but for this example, it's worked quite well. So templates themselves can be quite useful depending on what type of editor you are. As I said at the beginning of the video, some people prefer to take their time. I'm one of those. Uh, I prefer to go in and take my time. But I can see the value for these templates and for other people. And I can see it's a good starting point as well to go in then and tweak your edit. So it's something, if you've already pre-ordered the software, it's something I would go in and play around with. I definitely would. You may like them, you may not. You may prefer just to go into the edit side of things and tweak the entire image yourself. That is what is good about the software the, what I've seen of it working so far, that's what's good about it. You have the option. It has the AI technology built in, uh, but it also has the ability to go back and edit. Some folks have been asking about the layer side of things and can, is it possible to do composites in it? I'd just like to say that I cannot comment on that just now because this isn't a fully working copy. This is the beta version of it. And once the beta version has been completed and it's finished, and I think it is nearly there, uh, but once it's completed and finished, yes, I'll be looking to see whether you can do composites in it or not. I cannot say just now, and I would not like to say either way. Uh, so please, hopefully you'll forgive me for that. As you know, I like my composites, but for me myself, I also use Photoshop and other softwares as well to get them. So hopefully you'll forgive me for not being able to answer all of these questions just now. It's simply because it's a beta copy. And basically uh, what we're doing just now uh, is we're just showing you what the software can do currently. And that's just to allow you to see, okay, this is the software for me. Or nope, it's not. I'm going to stick with Luminar 4.3 
or I'm going to stay, stay with Photoshop and maybe just jump in and out this, whatever you do. As you know, women are 4.3. And again, I'd like to say that Luminar AI is a completely different software, but I use Luminar 4.3 as a plug-in to Photoshop and Lightroom. I don't use it as a standalone because that suits my workflow. This software here, Luminar AI, will suit other people's workflows. I can see me delving, jumping in and out of this already to do certain elements within my workflow. So I can see the value in it for me as a, a photographer and as an image editor. So I'm looking forward to the full version and just putting it through its paces. Thanks again for watching and hopefully that provides you another small insight into what this new software can do. As I say, once the full version's there, I'll go through everything that I can with it with you. So thanks again for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.